The next presenter is Maria Hoybeck. She will talk about the effect of dietary fatty acids on ovarian maturation, spawning time, egg and larvae of wild and captive cod. Welcome, Maria. Thank you. Yes, as Jonna mentioned, this study investigates the effect of dietary essential fatty acids on gonadal development, time and of spawning, and the quality of eggs and larvae of cod. And this is a study combining uh, field work on the Baltic cod and their main prey, spread and herring, and then also experimental work done on uh, captive Atlantic cod. This is a part of my PhD project, and it's done in collaboration with my three supervisors, Josiane Stedrup, Jonathan Kiewicz, and Charlotte Jakobsen from D2. And the experimental work is furthermore done in collaboration with uh, it triple. Uh, in this presentation, I will do a short introduction. Um, uh, it will be quite short because Jonah has mentioned some of the things already. Then I'll go on to my uh, study or my results from my field work on Balticot and its prey. Um, in this, this field work was done in, uh, from end of 2008 to end of 2009. And as Jonah mentioned in the previous study, we focused on the early or in the maturing fish, but in this we will try to cover the whole, uh, the period more in detail and get all the maturity stages. And then I'll move on to my, uh, or to the experimental work we did. Uh, on captive Atlantic cod, and this study was done uh, this year from uh, January to mid-April, so this is some very new results and they are still uh, quite preliminary. And then I'll try to make some conclusions. Dietary fatty acids and lipids has been identified as major factors determining successful reproduction and the uh, survival of offspring. These, the most important uh, fatty acids of the lipids are, as John also mentioned, these polyunsaturated ones, uh, and especially the one uh, called ARA, EPA, and DHA. And as mentioned, it was these fatty acids are essential for marine fish, as they cannot uh, produce them themselves. Uh, so that is why the, it's not only the, the amount of energy that fish are, are gathering that's important for reproduction, but also the, uh, the composition of the lipids, uh, energy or the quality, if you like. These PUFA are, have a important structural roles in membrane, but EPA and ARA furthermore has a important role for the eicosanoids, or the sex hormones, as also mentioned. I just want to add as well that the, the hormones or the eicosanoids made from ARA are more active than the ones made from EPA. Uh, but, the, but the eicosanoids formed from EPA will competitively um, inhibit the formation of the ones from ARA. So this means that the EPA R ratio in the diet will affect the activity of these eicosanoids. Uh, yeah, as John mentioned, there's been some changes in the uh, fish stock dynamics in the central Baltic Sea. But here are the three main species, cod and its two main prey, spread and herring. Uh, and actually in, the, in this area of the Baltic, they um, make up more than 90% of the diet of cod, so they're very important prey. Uh, here you can see in the black dots is the stock spawning biomass, and the stock uh, for the biomass for cod has been 
uh, decreased, as John also mentioned, but spread increased and herring decreased. This has uh, changed the proportion of spread and herring in the, in the diet of cod in this period, which is from 75 to 2005. In the lower figures, you see the mean weighted age. Uh, and I just want you to uh, look to spread and hearing that it's decreasing in this uh, period. And as it is a measure of condition, we uh, think this might have an uh, effect on the quality for prey for God. So the hypothesis is, uh, does do the limitation in essential fatty acids in the Baltic Sea ecosystem affect uh, cod reproduction, including the delay in spawning time that Diana has been showing, but also um, quality and survival of offspring. The field work was done in the Baltic Sea, uh, in this area, ISO subdivision 25. It was done with uh, research vessels both German and uh, Danish cruises, and uh, from end of 2008 to 2009, and it was both November, February, March, May, July, and August. For um, cod, we were measuring both um, length and uh, GSI and liver indexes, as, and we were collecting all gonads and liver, uh, in all, uh, and we were collecting cod in all maturity stages. The prey, the uh, spread and herring were caught at the same collections and were um, divided into uh, length groups that we have identified prior to be the most important um, uh, in, from cod stomach um, analysis. Then in the lab we were maturing a cod uh, with histology. Uh, here you can see we tried to cover the whole reproduction cycle of cod and if you try to men remember the colors I will use them later for maturing. Uh, the light color and red for spawning fish and the blue for resting and uh, spent and resting fish. We were doing lipid analysis on uh, cod liver and gonads, on both phospholipids and neutral lipids. And for cod, uh, for uh, spread and herring, sorry, we did it on whole fish because we wanted to see what the quality was for, uh, for as a prey or for cod. And we were looking at total lipid. Before lipid analysis, we grouped them according to fish length, season, uh, sex and maturity stage. The one in red is the most important for, for this presentation. And here's some results what we found from the prey or the lipid content of um, herring in blue and spread in red. And we chose here the sizes were the, which were the most abundant uh, at this time. And the period is going from October to October. And we surely see um, um, the highest uh, lipid levels in, in uh, late summer and winter, and then a decrease during uh, spring and summer. This uh, is, as also mentioned in some of the earlier talks, because of the food availability, uh, which is uh, low in, um, uh, in winter. So it uses up lipid reserves. But then it, uh, the, when the zooplankton arrives in spring, it doesn't increase because here we have the spawning period of, here is it for herring, and a long one for spread. So it will uh, continuously uses up lipid reserves in this period, even though it has uh, zooplankton in this period. If we then add the uh, reproduction of cod in the end, you can see that the light color in the middle is when it's building up its lipid reserves, 
uh, on the ridges when it then is spawning. You can see, as John also mentioned, it is very late uh, in this area. Uh, so you will have the period when they are building up lipid reserves is actually when it's lowest in its, the lipid content is lowest in prey. The same is true if you look at the ARA or the content of ARA. Here is milligram per gram fish. Uh, we can see that there's very low in, um, uh, especially in June on, and also in spring. And it's again here where it's really uh, needed for cod. So what did we find in cod? Was this reflected? And actually it was reflected in the uh, lipid of the gonads. Uh, again, the light color is the maturing, early and late. And you can see it start being high, and then it uh, decreases already in late maturing fish. And it's very low in, uh, in the spawning fish. Uh, here it's the initiation, the main and the end of spawning, and then it gets high again in spend and resting fish. If we look at the EPA-R ratio that I mentioned was uh, important, it is then the opposite picture. It's high in late maturing and in the main spawning period. So to summarize, we have a low content of ARA in both spread and herring in spring. And this may affect cut reproduction as it coincides with uh, cut variant development in the Baltic Sea. And this high EPA-R ratio in late maturing cod may also affect the activity of, of um, the sex hormones. But we try to then to test this uh, hypothesis with uh, doing uh, experimental work. Uh, and this was um, conducted at uh, the St. Andrews Biological Station in, uh, uh, in New Brunswick, Canada in collaboration with a uh, triple uh, and supported by a uh, fresh STSM. And as I said, it was this, uh, this winter and spring. The lipid composition of the diet was, we had three different diets made and um, our was high in uh, diet A and B and then we had a diet C with a uh, low value and then the difference between A and B was the ratio of EPA, which make the three diets with uh, three different EPA area ratios. The lower diet C is the one closest resembling um, the ratios from spread and herring from the Baltic Sea. We were feeding them more than six months, so we were sure that we were covering the whole um, uh, maturing, maturation period. Then the way we did the study was we had two different types. We had both focusing on the natural spawning. Uh, this was done in eight tanks because we had triplicates. The idea was to have triplicates of each diet, but from one of the diet, we, diet B, we didn't have enough males to do triplicates, so we could only do duplicates. Uh, and these tanks we had spawning from, of course, several males and females, and every day we were collecting uh, eggs. Uh, and all the eggs were then photographed uh, to, to measure fertilization rate, and we were also taking uh, lipid samples of all batches. The other part uh, in the darker gray is, uh, is uh, with uh, stripping, artificial, artificial uh, fertilization done by stripping. And here we had uh, in total 35 females. For these fish, it was single males and single females. And um, for these eggs, we did fertilization trials to measure the fertilization rate and also to measure egg size and dry weight. And we had lipid samples. And we were incubating eggs both. Uh, in batches and in microwells 
uh, to have single leg incubation uh, to measure hatching rate and survival rate and larval deformities. And the one in bold are the one I will show a summary sold of now. Um, we thought that the one of the hypotheses was that the ARA was could delay the uh, or low level of ARA could delay the spawning time. But uh, here we have all the egg batches uh, or the egg volume collected each day. The colors are the replicates, but don't mind them at the moment. Just see that the period is from end of or start of February to the mid April, and it seems like there's no difference uh, between the between the diets, and especially it didn't seem like diet C was delayed in this study. For the single egg incubation, we did these uh, microwells. So we had four trays per batch. So we had in four times 24 eggs in each of these trays. And we were following them first every second day and then every day uh, to look at mortality. And this three curves shows the three diets. The blue is diet C. Uh, and you see that it looks like it's higher than diet A and B. And if you put in uh, here, not day 19 to 20 was the day of hatch. And it seems like they have an uh, increased mortality from this uh, point in onward. Also, the hatching rate look like uh, there is a tendency to a lower hatching rate in, in diet C and the level deformity seems to be uh, higher. So we can conclude from this study that there was no difference between the diet in the onset of spawning and the low content of ARA and high and or, the, we don't know which one, but low ARA or the high EPA ARA ratio was affecting egg quality and um, larval survival in Atlantic cod. And if we go back to the Baltic, it could be that low content of ARA in the Baltic spread and herring may be at a critical level for equality, again, equality and larval survival in the Baltic cod. So thank you for your attention.